My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. And someone asked me, based on the Conrod uh, video, what is shop peening? So, shop peening is where you get your rod, you can do it with crankshafts, you can do it with all sorts. And what you do is you blast it with metal balls. So these balls come flying in, they go dink, and they leave a dent. They literally plastically deform it. Uh, why do we want to do this? <coughs> so, when you... Um, forge or form a metal what can happen is you can have regions in this metal between the grain boundaries so you'll have a grain boundary like this this is obviously massively massively exaggerated and what can happen is is as the metal cools um, obviously the, everything contracts and you can get what you call uh, tensile set what you call residual tensile stresses so basically you have a grain like this and a grain like this in the metal and then as they shrink, as they shrink slightly when they contract, when they cool, they don't really pull apart. This, this is just an example. There's a tensile stress in there. So they're basically trying to pull apart from each other. This can form a crack, what we call a micro fission or a micro crack. And this can cause these things to break. So what do we do to alleviate this? Well, we fire balls at it because that's what you do with anything. <laughs> Obviously, in that the old um, American saying is that if you don't like, if there's a problem, shoot at it. Um, so basically what we do is we have these grain boundaries just like, like on a surface like this. And they are pulling apart. There's a stress, there's a residual stress in there. Um, when you do a lot of castings and stuff, especially lathes. So what they used to do back in the day and what China doesn't do anymore... <laughs> is that when you used to cast uh, cast iron, cast iron bed for a lathe or a milling machine or anything like that, even beams and stuff like that, is that you used to let them relax. Um, so basically you leave a beam uh, six months to a year and they used to have these giant sheds where you just basically let the, the iron relax. And what used to happen is, is that they'll twist and they'll bend and they'll deform or they'll just basically relax in the way they are. The residual stresses can take quite a long time to dissipate, and they don't entirely dissipate. Then what you do is you grind it. What would happen now is in China is they cast these things and then grind them straight away, and then you leave it six months to a year. It's been shipped to you and all the rest of it, and the bed will twist out of alignment and stuff like that. Bend, twist, and all the rest of it as these residual stresses are dissipated throughout the entire material and a diffusion of carbon and all these other little things it's all about gibbs free energy we won't go into that because that's whew, too much um <laughs> it's just we're not you know we're not doing fucking metallurgy or anything shit like that to that degree um and then your grinding surface would be out where back in the day they used to basically let these things rest and then bring them out of storage and then grind them so it's more likely to stay untwisted um, so what we do is, to get rid of this, these internal stresses, is we impact them. So we impact the surface like this, which means that now we're under compression like this. And compression is the opposite of tensile stresses, so in a sense they cancel each other out. That's the loosest way of thinking about it. And you repeatedly impact it and impact it and impact it. Um, so shot peening, peening, you know, is when you get a hammer. And it's something that um, blacksmiths have been doing for a long time. You know, so you get the, 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 the peen end of a hammer, the, the ball end basically, this end. And then you basically induce compressive stresses into that material. And this basically kind of stops these micro cracking, this micro cracking from occurring it is a cold working process obviously you don't want to heat it up because you'll you'll fuck it all up <coughs> um that's very rude of me <coughs> oh god's sake it's not helping um so yes this is a cold working process and basically it's like sandblasting uh sandblasting is obviously an abrasion this is actually trying to plastically deform stuff. It's not trying to scrape away stuff. Yeah, it's literally like a mini hammer, just giving it thousands of taps all over. And like I say, it's like a sandblaster, apart from it's got a lot more pressure and it's got a lot more oomph to speed up these little ball bearings. And the little ball bearings are absolutely fucking tiny. Um, so it's to induce a surface, a uh, surface hardening ish. Um, surface hardening is not its intention. Its intention is to relieve these stresses to stop cracks and fissures from opening because all cracks start with a micro crack between a, 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 
between a grain boundary and you know if you keep on putting stress on these things um, cyclic stresses fatigue basically these things will eventually crack and that's where they'll break so because <coughs> uh, there's also tensile stresses inside so inside the material there's obviously these tensile stresses as well however because they're interior to the um, part these aren't so much to worry about because con rods have bending moments so obviously when you bend this bit is up uh, wrong way this bit is under tension when you bend something and the other side of it is in compression like when I did my floppy donkey dick example um, so if you have compressive stresses that are in there these residual compressive stresses then if there was no compressive stresses then there would be greater tension tensile stresses if there's compressive stresses in a sense you're plus so then you've got to put enough force on it to or a bending moment you've got to put enough force on it to cancel out those compressive stresses and then begin the tensile stresses and th that means the tensile stresses aren't as high if that makes sense um it is quite a complicated thing because obviously when you start thinking three-dimensionally it becomes fucking horrible um but yeah and, and this is another reason why due to fatigue and stuff this is another reason why rolls royce and other places they do single crystal growth turbine blades um so there are these grain boundary layers so these kind of things don't happen so the whole blade itself will expand and contract so there isn't basically it's devoid of weak points um in the super super future i am sure they will make con rods that are um single crystal growth the fact of the matter is is that on your motorbike even for motor gp and stuff uh the rods do okay and do fine where in the future when they really start pushing these things i'm sure they'll do single crystal growth con rods and stuff like that hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit